Morning, everybody. It, uh, we're going to give this just a, another minute or two as there's still a few people popping in, and then we'll get things rolling as we've got a lot of, of information to cover and, and some great things for you. Um, we've also got uh, a couple people on here to, to be able to monitor and watch for some questions. So if you've got a question or anything, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask. And, and well, honestly, hopefully we'll be able to, to, to get to that. So we've moved uh, this year from from our, our standard go-to webinars into the team side of things. So it, it uh, hopefully everything is, uh, we can find all the right buttons and pieces for you. So it, uh, it's always an adventure when we start moving into a new platform. So um, let a couple, like I say, just a, an, another little bit and then we'll actually get things rolling for you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started because I know we're we're got a tight window here, and uh, we want to make the best use of your time so not everybody is waiting. Uh, again, welcome to today's webinar, um, where we're going to basically go over our new software suite, which is is something new, both new and old. And so, uh, as we kind of dive into this, uh, it's something that we've redone in, in a much greater fashion, and so we wanted to share with that. Um, and what we're going to do is really kind of cover some of the basics of that or give you kind of a high level look at that. Then just so you know, we're also going to be going a little bit more in depth with some of these different features in subsequent different webinars throughout 2024. Uh, there's a lot of information and, and we want to make sure that uh, we can can do a real deep dive into to some of them. Um, but we want to get a good overview so you can really see what we're up against and what we're doing. Um, so we're going to kind of get fired off and, and ultimately esteem's really focused on really the heavy industries and this is everything from kind of those traditional core markets such as water wastewater oil and gas mining and it's now bridging into kind of those cutting edge technologies and the emerging markets i mean we're dealing with agvs and autonomous vehicles and video streaming and security and so it's it's something that where we're seeing it as you are is that data is really crucial and the networking demand has never been greater with that and with that what we're seeing is that the networks themselves or the wireless networks have kind of moved from just being a, a side piece into really a an essential component of the overall network architecture this is really what's bringing the a completely connected enterprise we're, we're branching off of that or extending the network uh, to bring in new capabilities, new locations. And so when we start talking about some of the new capabilities that are out there with with the radios and, and these wireless networks, new capabilities such as mesh networking, redundant routing, roaming, increased cybersecurity. There's a lot of new things out there and it does require additional and, and a bit intricate type of configuration. And we understand that that can really seem a little daunting and complex at times of how do we pull this thing off. So really what we did is we built this in a Steam software suite. And this is basically something that we wanted to simplify really kind of three things. We wanted to make it easier for you to configure the, the networks. We want to give you increased visibility into that network performance as well as the network health. We also want to give you the tools to be able to troubleshoot and do some diagnostics of what's actually going on with these networks. So what really kind of what we did is we released an entire suite that you'll you'll see here of individual utilities that can be run independently. But there's also a lot of these utilities are nested within each other because we wanted to try and keep the workflow smooth, easy, and a little bit more, I guess, natural is a good word to, to look at it, is, is how you would go about doing this in the real world. And so we can kind of look into the different aspects of it, but also what this is, and, and some of you that have used our, our utilities in the past, they're all individual utilities that had to be downloaded and updated individually. So now it, it's one simple download that then not only get the utilities, but also when, when updates are coming out or new features are added, everything can be updated all at once. So the other thing is that for those of you that have used our utilities in the past, 
Um, one of the biggest changes of, of this new software suite versus the old software utilities that we had is that ultimately now we're Java free. You know, it, it served us very well for many years in making our software platform very agnostic. But, you know, Java's kind of become a, a bit of a security concern and it required updates that were really outside of our control. So we basically redid this utility to, into a Java free platform. When we're looking at this, this is actually available. It's something that we develop primarily for our uh, the esteemed customers and the integrators to make really kind of the, the development and the integration a little bit simpler, a little bit faster, and, and basically more, most importantly, a little bit easier. And so you can actually download this utility directly from our website. Um, just under the resource center, you'll see esteem utilities. And once you get in here, you can actually see just a, a single button click to, to download the whole thing. And so this will be bundled in. You can, can extract that file and, and install this directly under your machine. It's also something, there is no charge for this. It's something right now that we're doing for free. Um, and so it, there, there's some talk of some other utilities that we may develop for specific customers that, that may be that way um, in terms of a, a, a licensing fee of some sort. But right now, everything that you see there is available for use on that. So. Um, okay, so really kind of enough about why we did this and, and where to get it. We really kind of want you here to see how this thing works. And so with me, I've got Eric Marsky, who's a Steam's kind of wizard of all things wireless. Um, and he's actually going to show us kind of an overview of all the utilities that you're going to be using. And we're like I said, we're going to be doing a much deeper dive into each of these utilities in future webinars throughout 2024. Um, there's a lot of information that Eric's going to go over. And so I want to make sure that you, you understand that, I mean, we're, we're recording this. We're going to post this up onto the website as well as the ones that we do throughout the year so as, as an easy reference, you know, for you to be able to go back and look at and, and review on something like that. And so with that, I am going to close my mouth and turn it over to Eric to walk you through how these things actually work. Eric. All right. All right. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. I'm really kind of excited to get everybody a quick introduction on the uh, new software suite. Let me go ahead and share my screen here real fast. Get everybody out of the way. Okay. All right. Now what I want to do is I'm going to give everybody kind of a quick walkthrough really on what the new utilities are actually able to provide. There are actually nine individual software programs that are actually bundled into this software suite. This is actually all found. If you go to your start menu, it'll be loaded under a directory simply called Esteem Software Suite. The utilities that it will provide are actually the 195 narrowband configuration utility, the Discover utility, Edge 900 configuration utility, and Horizon Network Manager. These four are the primary configuration utilities for the different models of radios that we have. The other ones, the peer monitoring, uh, Modbus status, Spectrum Analyzer, these are actually shortcuts to different features within there that we've actually created their own utility that you need, to, if you go back to them, you don't have to open the primary utility to actually find this. Now, every one of our radios, we actually make nine different models of radios. Every one of them is actually programmed through the, um, through the Ethernet port. Because of that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to match up the Ethernet port on your computer to what the radio is configured for to be able to access it for whether we're doing it through the web interface or there are any one of these utilities, the two need to be actually programmed to the same IP subnet. So we really wanna start with the utility that kind of begins everything, and that's the discover utility. Now, the discover utility, and everybody can see here what that is on the screen when you open it up, um, it's actually gonna open up on my primary. I wanna bring it over here so it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, what the discovery utility allows us to do is it will actually show all the connected steam radios either into a direct machine direct connection into the radio or through the switch or the network um, so that you can actually get in and change those 
radios to match into your computer or your network's IP subnet. The beautiful part is, is that even if it's not on the same network, um, the radio will show up and allow you to get in and adjust it. So if I click Discover, what I'm actually going to see here is these are all the different esteem radios that we currently have connected into our network for our for a demonstration here. Uh, every one of the radios is actually listed by the serial number. We've got some critical information such as the MAC addresses, both on the wireless side and the Ethernet side. The key information to talking to it, which is the IP address, net mask, and gateway. The information such as the SSID, which is the network name, which mode of operation the radios are into. Uh, one of the nice features is that every one of our radios will allow you to go in and set what we call the radio ID. So you can easily associate it by location, by um, name, even if you can put address. It's just an alphanumeric uh, text name that you can give the radio, just so it gives a little bit more of a human understanding, so you're not constantly referencing everything by IP address to it. It also will list out the current firmware version, and as you see here at the very end, this last column is actually the models that the radios are. Now, as you see here, we actually have one, two, three, four different models of radios. Now, you may not necessarily want to be able to see all of those at one time. You actually can go up here and simply go to modem filter and say we were only interested in looking at the Horizon 900 megahertz radios. So if you've got a network that has multiple radio uh, versions in it, It'll allow you to actually break down which of those models are so that you consolidate that list. You can actually click on any one of these given columns and it'll actually list it by uh, numerically from top to bottom, which are the IP serial numbers. But all of this key features um, that we go into, as Dan alluded to, we're actually going to have individual training sessions on each one of these utilities. There is a tremendous amount of information for any one of these, especially when we get into the configuration utilities. You're going to see that it's going to be a lot more in depth than we can actually do on this quick introduction. So we're just want to give you an idea of what the main purpose of these utilities actually are. So the discovery, more than anything else, is going to show you those radios, and you can actually adjust the IP address to match into your network. So if this IP address is different than what your uh, IP subnet is, you can simply just double click on it, change the IP address to match into your network, and once that is done, you'll actually then light up this button that says Apply Changes. It'll actually reconfigure that specific radio, reboot it, and when it comes back up again, now we can actually start interfacing directly with the radio because now the two are actually talking to each other. So there are actually three, as you see here, we got multiple families of radios that we go into. Each one of them will program just a little bit different. For example, our Horizon family of radios, actually there are, uh, there's the Horizon 900 megahertz, we've got one at 2.4 gigahertz, one at 4.9, and one at 5.8 gigahertz. Every one of these radios actually programs very similar. And if you go to and find that radio that you want to program on this discovery, if you click on it, do a right mouse click, you'll see that the top action up here is configure radio. Well, by default, the Horizon series all have web browsers built into them so that you can interface, program them, do diagnostics without having to have a specialized utility. Now, you can actually do all of your programming for the Horizon series radios through the web interface. It's very straightforward, but we wanted to be able to simplify it a little bit because that is the radio that can create very complex networks, uh, backup links, mesh links, multiple interfaces to it. We can actually run um, multiple uh, bridges over a single link. So it's a very complex radio. So to greatly simplify that, Therefore, we created a utility specifically for the Horizon. And what I'll do is let me bring up the software suites. And the one that will uh, program the Horizon is actually what's called the Horizon Network Manager. So I'll start that program up, bring it over here to the screen so you can see it. I'll get this out of the way. And as you can see here from the Horizon Network Manager, we really can go in and do this in a couple different ways. If you have an existing set of networks, you can actually click the button that says Discover Networks. 
And as you see, it has actually found two of the horizon networks that we see up here on the Discovery. Three radios inside the Horizon 900 megahertz networks and one radio inside the Horizon 2.4, which is actually our company Wi-Fi. Now, the beautiful part about this is everything that is done within this network manager, we wanted to take everything out and make it very visual. So it's very easy to understand how these networks go. So let me just get quickly run through how this would set up. So if we're going to start with a new network, you simply just pick the frequency that you want it to be. Well, you know, let's say we had a 5.8 gigahertz network. We click OK. It's now going to ask us some basics. In other words, the network name, which is our SSID, what bandwidth we want to operate, what frequency channel. Those are going to be the items that are common to all radios within that network. Once we've established that, we simply click OK, and it will actually create a network down here. As you see here, we just have zero radios in it at this point. So we can either double click on here or we can click the thing. We can click the uh, network itself and hit view selected network. And what it will do is it will open up a blank worksheet is the best way to look at this. Now, as you see here from the different menu items, there are really a bunch of different applications that we can run within here. Overall, though, what we want to do within this is we simply want to be able to put our network into a visual format, tell the radios who they need to talk to, and then ultimately the biggest benefit to this utility is we've added in the ability to monitor that network when it's been programmed. So if we look at how to enter radios, what we can do is we can actually go in, connect all the radios. If it was a brand new network, plug them into the same switch. You hit the button that says discover, and it will just lay all the radios out on that network. If you don't do this, you can actually do it individually. You can simply go into where it says new radio. It will ask you the serial number for that radio. And from that serial number, it will pull all the critical information from it. If I click OK, it will actually just be represented by an outline of the Horizon Radio, give us the radio information as far as the model number, the serial number that we put in, the MAC address, and if we run, um, hover over that radio, it'll give us more specifics on it. Uh, once we discover it, a lot more of this details, in other words, the bootloader information, software version, all that, will actually be highlighted inside of there. Now, if we don't necessarily know what the serial numbers are, in other words, you can use this utility to essentially pre-configure network so you can lay out exactly the way you want it to get before the radios even show up, we can actually put in what we call placeholders or put them in as dummy radios. Well, a dummy radio really is nothing more than it has no specific serial number attached to it. But you can actually go back in once the radios do arrive and you can actually easily just convert those dummy radios into actual radios by their serial numbers. So you're not actually wasting any time in putting this network together. So to make these two radios talk to each other, all you really need to do is start with either one of these two boxes. They both actually represent the same type of connection. It's just where they're on the page, which you'll, which you'll see here in a second. We can just grab, click on it, drag, and drop the link in between those two radios. It's just that simple. Now what's going to happen is, is the, the utility is going to come up and create the configuration of those two radios so that they can then bridge the link between those two devices. Now, as I mentioned to you, there are many different um, uh, ways of going into uh, how this network works. Let's go ahead and actually look at an existing network so we can see what this would look like in real time. So if I go to that Horizon megahertz network, double click on it, what it will actually do is it will populate our screen now with those three different radios that we show listed in the discovery. Now, as we see here, we actually have a master radio, we have a remote radio, and we have a spare. Well, those now, as you can move them around on the screen, you see how the lines actually follow the different boxes? Really, this is just simply put on the screen to simplify so that they don't cross the words on the screen. Now, 
as I mentioned to you before, as you hover above them, now we can get information such as the software version, the IP address, and all the way down to the MAC addresses for those links. So we can get much more detailed on it. To program them, you can simply double click on it and you can go through the radio configuration editor, the same information that you'd be entering if you entered it through the web browser. Once we've done this, we've created these visual links, we see here that we actually have this dashed line. Well, what does that dashed line represent? Well, if you're not really sure, you can actually just simply go to help, click the legend, and the legend menu will actually list out what state the radios are in by the different colors all the way down to the lines, what that represents. So this is telling us this is actually a backup link between the Ray remote radio and the spare to create this very small mesh network. In other words, if the master were ever to disappear, the spare and the remote would still be able to maintain communication all the way through this backup link. Now, every one of these elements is actually active. So if I double click on this, this will actually tell us that the path length is greater than one. So therefore, that set that as the backup length. And as Dan alluded to, there is a tremendous amount more information that we can provide, how we set these into different modes of operation, how we create these more complex networks. This is far beyond the scope of what we want to get to this morning. But overall, I wanted to just give you an idea of what the capabilities are. Once this network is actually um, laid out on the screen and you actually are talking to those individual devices, they can be spread across the entire county. Now you can actually go up, click the monitoring button, hit start monitoring, and it will actually begin reading the Modbus TCP information out of each one of these radios. So it'll give us the critical information for each link, the signal strength, the speed of that link, whether or not it's connected and whether or not it's forwarding. So you see here, we actually have forwarding links and all this. This backup link is actually in a blocked state so that it will break the loop of this network. So you can actually see which individual routes are operating and connecting through this network. So there's a tremendous amount of information, incredibly, incredibly powerful tool. Okay, let me go ahead and turn this off. Let me close this down so we can kind of continue on from there. There. Are there are three different primary families of radios that we make. We've got the Horizon radios, as I mentioned to you, multiple different frequency bands. We also have what we call the 195 narrowband series, which consists of our 195M, which is the 150-174, the 195H, which is the 217 to 220, and the 195C, which is the 450 to 470 megahertz. All of those radios actually have very similar uh, configurations for them. So what I want to do is just because of that, they all actually fall under one simple tool. So if I find our model 195M, we have listed here on our network, we simply go do a right mouse click. Now this particular one does not have a web browser, nor does our other uh, family of radio, which is the Edge 900. Each of those has a separate configuration utility because it doesn't have a web browser built into it. So if I click configure radio on this, it will actually open up the Steam 195 narrowband configuration utility. Now, these are a little bit simpler in the fact that the they don't have the complex meshing capabilities and everything to it, but this also has the ability to do both serial and ethernet communication in this 195 narrowband series. So the first thing it's going to ask us is what type of data interface do we have, address, frequency, if you're going through any repeaters, ultimately to get to our destination. Okay. We also can go in and say, change into the advanced configuration. So if you wanted to see all the available parameters, or we can break it down by specifically those that are related to the radio. All the parameters within the radio can actually be changed, modified, updated for as either we, we instruct you to do so or as you are uh, troubleshooting the system, it'll allow you to go in there and, and do this. Now, for most applications, the configuration on the radio, especially in the serial type systems, is fairly straightforward. If we it, enter in the data interface, the uh, the addressing information for the radio. We then can select next. We can then set the serial baud rate. Once we've established that, 
We select next, tell it which mode we want the radio to be. Do we want it to be a simple, transparent connection? Do we want to use one of the emulation drivers that we built for these radios? So we can, compl we can completely emulate any one of the Allen Bradley DF1, either full duplex, half duplex, radio modem. We can actually go in and set it for the different Modbus, Opto22 or DNP3. If we don't have a specific emulation driver written for the radio, then you can use the transparent mode. It's actually going to actually look just like a piece of cable stretched between the two radios. Once this is done, you can simply set it, enter in how many retries you want the radio to go and whether or not you want to encrypt this wireless link. This will actually encrypt up to AES-128 with this encryption phrase. As you notice here, we really have no next button. We can simply then take those primary elements that we entered and write that configuration to the radio. If you are going to be doing routing, in other words, you're using one of the emulation drivers and using multiple repeaters, you can actually go in, click over from the general tab into the routing tab, and you can then put in which sites need to use repeaters by a range, what the repeater addresses are, or if you've got a fairly complex network, you can actually switch to the advanced and configure it in a table format. Again, all of these we will cover in much more greater detail for those specific utilities. As you can see here, we could spend hours on each one of these, but all of these uh, features that we provide in the radio are able to um, highlight within this utility. So the 195M that we're currently configured for actually is backward compatible to the previous Model 192 utility. So we have the ability to go in and set that compatibility mode and get the radio to train to understand what the old radios operate as. It also has the ability within the uh, 185M specifically to use what's called a MERS band, which is an unlicensed VHF frequency. There are kind of specific rules to it, but this uh, utility will go in and make it a little bit easier to configure those basics. In other words, utilize the MERS, what channel you operate on, and from there, we can simply jump into the tools. Now, from the tools, you can see we can, one of the key features, if you've used our uh, 185 narrowband configuration utility in the past, the firmware version was actually tied specifically to this utility. That has been completely removed. It has been a complete um, uh, side utility now that you actually can bring in the firmware version itself and you never have to change the utility tool. It's a tremendous feature. You can save, you can load the configuration files, you can jump to a direct console if you are familiar with the direct uh, addressing terms for it. You also can monitor the Modbus uh, features within this radio. So if I were to turn this on, you can see over here, what this is actually doing is opening up the Esteem Modbus Monitor utility, which is one of the utilities that we had talked about on our list here. This is just a shortcut to it. And as Dan mentioned, we have all of these shortcuts built within the radio. Same thing for the Spectrum Analyzer, which is built into the radio itself. And ultimately, the really nice feature of this is the if you're running these radios into a serial format, you don't have the pinging capability that you get out of IP-based systems. So we've built essentially a data simulator where you can go in, you put the radios you want to communicate to, what is the address you want to communicate to them over, uh, how many iterations we want to go, what is the packet size, uh, do we want to run it indefinitely, do we want to do a specific number of them, so you can actually simulate the data flow back and forth between the radios, and it will tell you the status of the connected, how many retries it took, so that you can get a great visualization of what's happening on that narrow band. But as you can see here, these are very, very powerful tools. So what I want to do is each one of them, like I said, I could spend an hour at each one, but I want to kind of continue so you can get a view of each one. So let's go ahead and move on now to the last and final utility that we'll be going over, which is the Edge 900. If I go to configure the radio on the Edge 900 radio, it will actually automatically open this Edge 900 configuration utility. Very similar to what we saw in the narrowband utility, the primary uh, 
configuration elements for this radio, in other words, which mode of operation is it going to be the master client, it makes it a little bit easier for the Edge 900 because it's actually a hub and spoke. It's a very simplified 900 megahertz configuration. So it's either going to be the center port or one of the remotes. Uh, it has a spectrum analyzer built into it, and it has an alignment utility so that you can uh, put in if you're uh, lining up directional antennas, this will automatically send out test packets, make it a little bit easier. Same thing as far as the channel configuration, network ID, you can configure the radio up to AES-256 and the passphrase. Uh, there's the radio ID, which is the model name, which we see up here in the discovery, just to make it easier to identify this radio. You set the IP address, and ultimately everything from down here is, because this radio is a lower bandwidth radio than we have available on other radios, this will help you really limit what type of traffic we want to be able to go over this radio. The keep alives, the uh, do I want to do multicast traffic, do I want to limit a uh, net buoy or IP6 type traffic. Same thing. Um, you can actually do with what's called the IP access list. You can put in there that the radio will only service very specific IP addresses as a remote. If you're running a serial interface, you can simply put in the serial information. What is the destination of, is it gonna be going to everybody within the network or is it gonna be going to specific IP addresses? If we click under the advanced, this is where we're going to get into when we get into uh, the the later portion of this and go over the edge configuration. As you can see here, we can really fine tune these radios to operate specifically to your network. If we go under the tools, we see here it's very similar to what we saw in the narrowband where you can save, load, we can update the firmware in the radio. We can run a spectrum analyzer. This one's grayed out because you have to put this radio specifically into the spectrum analyzer mode or we can reboot the radio. Down here at the bottom, you can read the configuration, write the configuration. You can actually even restore it to factory default. So as you can see, each one of these utilities will greatly help in configuring any one of these radio models that we have. Um, the different utilities um, from here are really here. just kind of, yes, go ahead, Dan. So within the horizon that you showed and then also on the narrow band it, it showed how you could test communications or monitor that how do you what do you do with the edge that you're showing uh, it's a great question because the edge is a little more simplified type of networking we really don't need to add any more tools than are actually available not only in the computer but actually what we've got available on discovery the beautiful part is that we can great we can put all this information just like we saw on the monitoring of the horizon. You can simply do that very similar thing through the discovery. If you get the discovery on your edge network, as you'll see here, the received signal strength will actually be listed right here on the discovery. So it will show you the master, what are the what are all the signal strengths to the remotes. And ultimately, we don't need to put in a data simulator because we can just simply use the IP ping test that's available in any computer. So okay. we're able to test that without having to use any outside utilities. So okay. that's one of the main reasons you didn't see anything there for the okay. edge. Okay. Yep. Um, all the other utilities, as you see here, the uh, the peer configuration, Modbus monitoring, spectrum analyzer throughput tests, those were actually features within other utilities, but they were a little buried at times. So what we wanted to do was be able just to bring those to the forefront so that you, if you really wanted to look specifically at the Modbus monitoring to a specific IP, you can actually do that through the utility. But these first four that you have listed on the screen are going to be the tools that will be utilized for it. So as you can see, there are a tremendous amount of different tools available to us. Um, and each one of these utilities uh, will have in the future their own uh, video set up to it. But I think that's probably a good place to stop uh, because we now have an idea of what is available. The beautiful part is, as Dan said, though, once you install this Esteem software suite, all of these will uh, install at one time. And as they're updated, you can simply update the suite as a whole and all the utilities within it will actually be available. Yeah, and I think the other one that uh, just as kind of a remind, 
is for for everybody out there is all this is available you can go download it now and 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 start to i, I guess explore it a little bit um like eric was showing is you know if you're in the, the horizon side you can create these dummy networks it, it's something that you can go grab today and start to do um, it's also great in terms of if you get some ideas of how you want to lay a network out <coughs> excuse me it is like Eric was showing, is you can create that network, basically save it and then send us that file. And we can actually go through that and say, okay, here's probably answer some questions, give some advice on some networks, or if you're having some some difficulties and you want to get some other eyeballs on it, again, you can pull that network, save it, and then just email that whole thing. And that brings in all the configurations to the radio and we can mock it up here as well. Great. And so it, uh, but but feel free if you've got any questions, you can reach out to, to myself or Eric or, or anybody on the team here. Um, and so, like I say, feel free to go grab this and start exploring. And, and when you have some questions, you know, feel free to to give us a holler. Unless there's some questions that are are out there now that we can answer, we got just a couple minutes before we're we're going to turn you loose and and not take up any more of your day. don't see anything here so i guess with that um thanks everybody for for taking some time and, and spending a, with us this morning and uh for you guys on the east coast i guess it's time for lunch and uh i will talk to you soon thanks <laughs>